Your town is a little unique and it, it comes with some unique challenges. Uh, you first ran to uh, meet those challenges four years ago and you're running again now. Uh, introduce yourself and let the folks of Leavenworth, if they don't know you by now, yeah. know who you are and, and what you've tried to do for the town. Well, I'm a uh, long-term resident, moved in 1985 with a young, very young family and raised them there and so I've been a part of that community and I ran quite frankly to keep it a community and the community to me is a diverse, um, has a workforce, has people that are living there that are of all ages, all incomes, you know, that's that kind of diversity is what makes a community in my mind um, and quite frankly we're threatened to lose that um, and become only a resort or only a retirement community for the wealthy. It's what happens in a lot of beautiful mountain towns. Um, I'm not willing to see us go that route without a fight. So I got involved to, to try to keep us a, a whole community. What are your pursuits and your profession beyond the mayorship, Carl? Well, I'm, I, I tell my wife I'm semi-retired, but um, I'm still administrator at Cornerstone Community, which is an adult family home with six um, developmentally delayed uh, young adults um, that's uh, in Leavenworth, and I still do that part-time. I spend a lot more than part-time as being mayor, which is, again, just because that's my passion. Um, but yeah, so that's what I am. I'm, I'm uh, semi-retired. What's the state of Leavenworth right now from your perspective? If you were giving an address, this is the state of our city, what would you say? I would say we're, we're healthy in some ways and we're struggling in others. And that's, you know, we have, um, as you say, we're very unique. We're 2,500 people, which by the way, that's, that's only grown in the last few years. It was 2,000 when I came and 2,000 when I left the first time and now, um, still was roughly 2,000. Um, big addition was the addition of the apartments behind Safeway, the Leavenworth House added um, a significant chunk as well as, but a lot of the housing that we've created have become second homes. So, you know, we were, we were treading water, I guess, in terms of the size for a long time. But so we're 2,500 now and we've got issues that deal with 10 times that size. So. You know, those are the unique challenges. Um, and like I said, I want to keep us a whole community, so that's a unique challenge. Um, keeping that balance between a strong business, but also a strong, you know, vibrant residential. So trying to keep that balance in place. And so really focusing on some of the things that, that'll enhance it for the residents as well. Well, talk about some of the enhancements that you've tried to pursue. What kind of projects have you taken on and what kind of success have you had? Well, so, you know, one of the big ones is, is the purchase of the Osborne former and now we're, you know, again, COVID has set back a lot of our intentions and kind of postponed some of those things. But we're right now studying um, the playground itself and replacing that playground and ball fields and things. And I know there's going to be some kind of smaller footprint community space there, but how that gets defined, um, we've recently been in conversations with the uh, library about maybe taking some of that over there, um, get them out of City Hall, which we need to expand. We've got some people in City Hall that are three in a room, um, and uh, we just, you know, we're growing um, in our needs, and so it might kind of be one of those places where it could be a win-win and get them out of their, um, you know, it's not an ideal spot for the library. It's not in the residential as much as it's close into that commercial and the parking and all that. So, you know, we're, we're just in the opening discussion stages of that. But, but that would also give us a, a way to have some community spaces and community rooms as well. Housing that was affordable for people who work in Leavenworth. This was a big uh, pillar of your campaign in yep, 2019. Yep. Still is. <laughs> and you've, you've tried to make some inroads in that area. We do see greater density coming to neighborhoods. We see accessory dwelling units going into neighborhoods. Um, but what more needs to be done? What other hurdles do we need to get across to where we get a housing market that will work for your diverse community right. that you envision? Right. So, you know, and that density is, is one piece of the puzzle. But density, increasing that density, and I, I say this kind of facetiously, but it's also, there's truth to it. So if we say instead of having one home here, we're gonna have two, 
we could just be creating two homes to be second homes for the other side. And they'll be somewhat less expensive, but not, quote, affordable. So that increasing density in and of itself is only one part of the solution. A key part, critical part, is having a funding stream that you can also bring to the table to say, OK, now these lots and these homes are ours. They're for our workforce. The only way in this society that I know that you can, you can demand that is bringing money to the table. Otherwise, like I said, we'll just be creating less expensive places, but eventually they would all go expensive. So, you know, the key to getting a workforce, the key to keeping a diversity is both increasing the density, which has a lot of people upset that the density is increasing because they like the single family home type of, of community that, that Leavenworth has always been. But that ship has sailed. There's no way to continue down that line unless we just hand it over to the millionaires and say, you're the only ones that are going to be able to afford this. So it's increasing our housing options and getting smaller and smaller lots and smaller homes and putting those on. Um, some cottage homes, some tiny homes, some, some condos, some you know, cottage housing, um, all kinds of different than, than what is typical for a small town. But it's the only way. Because the other thing that's changed, not only is land and everything, but just construction costs have just skyrocketed. We had a builder who wanted to create three affordable homes for us on three 30-foot lots. Moderate sized, you know, homes. He was tired of building the million dollar homes, wanted to do, give back to the community, was foregoing his profit. Even with subsidies, we couldn't pencil it out. Couldn't make it work. Just the cost of labor, the cost of materials, the cost of, you know, the land that he had purchased. I mean, so we were willing to help and bring some dollars to the table, and, he's, and we still couldn't get it to down low enough where it'd be a first time home buyer home. Um, so, and it would be, again, permanently first time. We've got a land trust that would keep it permanently affordable if we can get that affordability there. So, if we would have been able to, for instance, take those three and do six homes that were even smaller on them, then we could have start, then we could have given the option for somebody to get started and start building equity, and again, that's, that's, what, that's where I've created more, more, most of my wealth was created by having a home. And that's typical for most Americans. If we freeze people out of that opportunity, we're, we're not going to be a whole community. Carl Flory, running for a second term for Leavenworth Mayor. Thanks a lot for being here today. Uh, glad to be here, and I can talk all day. You know that. <laughs> we appreciate hearing from you. Yeah. You're watching the NCW Live channel.